Welcome to The Mountain Gardener with your host, Ken Lane. Gardening can be challenging, but with Ken's tips, tricks, and local advice, you'll reap huge rewards. Now welcome your host, Ken Lane. And welcome to this week's edition of The Mountain Gardener, your host, Ken Lane, here every week talking about the landscapes of northern Arizona. Spring is here. It just feels beautiful. Oh, my goodness. This kind of weather will actually increase or, or extend the length of the bloom cycle when it's kind of nice days and cool nights. This is like the perfect time. The, the birds are frisky. The, the bulbs are coming up. The tulips are about to bloom. The daffodils are about to go. You, you're seeing a pink tree right now in full bloom. It's been in bloom for about a week. It started last week. It'll bloom for another, I don't know, month or so. And then it starts to leaf out and things. But it's called a purple leaf plum. It's a very, very popular plant. It has this pink flower to it. It's a vase-shaped tree. Gets up, I don't know, 20 feet tall or so. It's a short tree as far as trees go. When you're comparing it to a 100-foot sycamore, it's it's a pint-sized little guy. But it's an accent. It's an ornamental tree. doesn't form plums usually. Sometimes it has a little cherry-looking fruit that it forms. But basically, it's, it's considered an ornamental plum, pink flowers. The foliage afterwards is this intense, deep, rich, royal purple color to it. It's very pretty. Great contrast tree for, let's say, next to uh, the the blue oaks or or Arizona cypress or uh, tucked in between some manzanitas. It's really quite stunning. To soften up that back corner where you've got a whole bunch of cinder block or, or, or a chain link, it just softens that up and brings the eye forward so you're seeing this beautiful purple instead of all this cinder block. It's a great way to design. There's another one that's just started really just in the last couple days. It's actually still opening uh, depending on your elevation or, or how you're facing, which side you're, of the hill you're facing. The north side of the hill where it's more shaded, cooler. I notice they're not quite in bloom, but the south side, full white color. There's a short tree, maybe about 30 feet tall, a little bit taller than a purple leaf plum. In fact, they're companion plants to each other. It's called a Bradford pear or ornamental pear. It does not form fruit. It doesn't have a a pear fruit. Those things have not quite bloomed. The fruiting pears have not quite bloomed yet. The ornamentals usually will bloom earlier uh, before your fruiting varieties, but it's considered an ornamental pear. It has the great flowers. It's got this beautiful, glossy, shade tree look. And it's got this bright red uh, color in the fall. So it's ornamental, just meant to be pretty, not to be messy. And so that's in bloom right now. It's up at uh, the mall here in Prescott. And you go up and down the the driveway around the mall, and you're seeing purple and, and, and pink uh, the purple leaf plums and that white Bradford pear. You're seeing that pink and white, pink and white. It's really pretty. And in addition, they've got this yellow shrub in between all these things. It's a forsythia. So flowering forsythia, you folks from the desert or, or tropical areas, you just wish you had access to or could grow all of these different varieties of blooming plants. But a lot of these heavy, heavy bloomers they need winter to rest, to kind of hibernate. So they've been hibernating since, I don't know, December. All of a sudden, the stars aligned, the soil temperature, the day temperature, the, the length of days have all aligned up where it's going, okay, the plants are telling you, it's spring, let's do this thing. And it's just in full bloom. And so it'll probably just keep going from this point. Uh, it'll just keep on getting more as soon as the forsythia are done blooming. Then it's the lilacs will start blooming. As soon as the lilacs are done, the roses will start blooming. There's just whole sequence of things that happened. Right now I had uh, um, gardenia. People don't realize we can grow gardenias here. This is a, a an evergreen shrub. Here it stays short. You folks from the south, you're used to these huge, gigantic, they get taller than you and I, 
gardenias, this evergreen shrub. Here they stay about knee to hip high. They're smaller. I grow mine in containers because I want this fragrance to be right there where everyone can enjoy it. I don't want it out in the garden. I want it right here where it's, I can, and a, and a container kind of raises it up so it's almost in your face. Here, let me bloom and, and this, this beautiful gardenia fragrance happens here. That's one for, for, let's see, this elevation for you, the, you folks brand new to the mountains of Arizona. You need to be a little careful. So gardenias are one of those. Gardenias, likes, they like to grow in the more shaded areas, which is perfect for a covered patio, you know, where you're sitting, where you're enjoying a sunset or a sunrise. That's usually where it's more protected. That's where they grow really well. There's a whole bunch of different varieties of gardenias. You want to grow in at this elevation the hardiest of the hardy varieties. So that southern gardenia doesn't it, it'll grow in the summer here, but come winter it 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 burns out on you. There's some frost series, there's some hardier than than ever series of gardenias. Of course, that's the ones we're specializing in here in Prescott, Arizona at least. We offer those. And so do a little bit of homework. Another one for you Phoenix folks, you're used to rosemary down there and rosemary will grow up here. It does very well, certain varieties. So rosemary, there's probably 50 different kinds of rosemaries that are grown and offered. Of course, the desert wants to have the hardiest, the, the ones that take on 150 degrees, take a blowtorch to it. They still will take that kind of heat. Those varieties don't do well up here at the, when it gets colder. You need you need a spread you need a ARP Huntington carpet spreading carpet uh, type of creeping rosemaries. There's two that really perform well that are proven up here. The other 15 that that are offered they they die out in the winter. You want Tuscan, uh, you want a, a barbecue. They're the big shrubs, the shrub not creeping. They grow up in two sh evergreen shrubs. They're starting to bloom right now. At least mine in my yard are starting to have this blue flower, the classic rosemary flower to it. This is the one you use in the kitchen. That same one. That's one we're talking about. But then there's different varieties. A rosemary is not, is, there's different types. A rosemary is not a rosemary is not a rosemary. You need, a, you need the one that's for here, the right one. So sometimes... Some of you believe you've got brown thumbs and you really don't. You went off to Trader Joe's and got that little tiny thing in a bucket at their front front as you enter. And it was meant to use inside the kitchen and harvest all of it right now. It's not meant to plant outdoors. These are greenhouse grown uh, herbs. They're not meant for the gardens out there. And so you're going, why did, why did it die? What happened? It wasn't you. You just bought the wrong. You were sold the wrong thing for the mountains of Arizona. I, I would say also, uh, you Californians, you love your Japanese maples. I mean, I, I do too. I grow several of them in my yard, but they do not like the sun. So that you're, you grow them over there, that low elevation where it's real humid against the coast. It's great. They do wonderful over there. Here, boy, you put a Japanese maple out in full sun, I know the plant says, oh, well, we'll take full sun, grow anywhere, and, and do well for you. Well, that wind with the dry climate and that bright sun, those three things, wind, dry, and, and sun, the, the tips of that leaf will start to burn out. So you need to plant it in the right place. And that's where you do a little bit of homework, and it makes a great big difference as you start to garden. We're starting right now. We, we just... Uh, this week, it looks like we've got the first big crops of the summer, the more frost-sensitive things. And so we've got tomatoes showing up like crazy right now, peppers, cucumbers. We've got uh, uh, geraniums and uh, petunias, uh, marigolds. These are all borderline plants. They can't take the 20 degrees, but they can sure take freezing 30s, 40s. They love that. So you're seeing this transition of plants coming in. Uh, we'll go into depth on how, on how to plant those and where to do. But we got Lisa Waters Lane coming in with your garden questions. You learn something there right after this. You've been listening to The Mountain Gardener with Ken Lane, owner of Waters Garden Center in Prescott. 
Join him every week for timely garden advice right for the gardens. Visit Ken where he can be found throughout the week at Waters Garden Center in Prescott. The colors of spring are bursting at Waters' 60th Spring Open House. COVID is over with a record number of Waters farmers showing off their newest, brightest flowers all weekend. Friday, we show off this year's showiest plant introductions. Saturday and Sunday is impromptu garden classes, plant garden giveaways, and drawings. Join the garden fun at Waters Garden Center's 60th Spring Open House, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, March 11th through 13th. 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott. Waters Garden Companion Plants of March are Oklahoma Redbud, Mountain Heat, Rosemary Creeper, Fanciful Forsythia, and Prescott Pansy. Prescott Pansy's giant three-inch flowers thrive in extreme March gardens. Large velvety blooms dazzle with radiant colors of blue, violet, yellow, and variations of stripes that look like smiling faces and love being planted in March. Shop the brightest spring flowers in-store or online at watersgardencenter.com. In Prescott. You've been listening to Ken Lane, the Mountain Gardener. Green thumbs learned while working in the Family Garden Center. Now welcome back to the Mountain Gardener. Okay, we are back with Lisa Waters Lane in the studio. She comes each week with your garden questions. Hey, my love, how you doing? <laughs> you look you look way better. Looks like you're busy. It's nice to be back in a rhythm, isn't it? Ah, uh, yes. At the garden center, definitely. Yeah, it's been a crazy few weeks. It has. Hopefully things are back to somewhat normal, as normal as they ever get. Thank you, everyone, for your condolences, the kind letters, the notes, even from attorneys. I mean, I love attorneys. <laughs> they don't have thank you cards. They just send, they put it on their letterhead <laughs> and then send it. But but very kind and very yes. sincere mm -hmm. uh, notes. And then, of course, all the others, just hundreds of them. Mm -hmm. Your father had hundreds of people at his memorial last week. And people are still hearing about it coming in. So we, we appreciate that, folks. This is a community and we feel loved and supported. Mm -hmm. And we, we thank you for that. So the garden questions, though, back to a positive highlight. <laughs> well, the other was positive, too. Well, it is. Yeah, yeah, your father was a great man. Through. We can yep. talk about gardening. Sure. Okay. Well, our first question is from Dan in Prescott. The top, the needles on the top of his Oregon green pine have turned brown and are very brittle. His question is, what may have caused that? Number one. Number two, will it put out new needles? And if not, should he just cut it back? Yeah, so that's actually a good question. Where was he located at again? Prescott. Prescott, okay, good, Prescott. So Prescott's famous for their pine trees. They're also famous for their bark beetle or Ips beetle. It sounds like it could be that. If the tree gets stressed, it can cause they, it's it can attract a little tiny beetle is a cute little thing uh comes in flat burrows in and, and girls a tree could be that could be if it's a newer tree just some transplant shock and so it will come back but the good thing is only the top is brown the other there's a lot of green left it sounds mm -hmm. like so there is recovery here's what to do dan make sure you fertilize the thing right now Take the all-purpose plant food, and I would water it in, but spread it around the, the drip line. Focus on the outer branches of that tree. Water it in. The plant will pick that up and use it to form this spring's candle growth or new elongated growth. Mm -hmm. Before you cut on it, just because it's right here where we're about to grow, uh, see where it's going to grow. You'll know within a month whether mm -hmm. that brown piece is going to grow or not grow. Generally speaking, when evergreens have brown on them, they don't grow back. It's dead. But I just, I've, I've seen some weird things over the years. <laughs> they prove you wrong. So why not just wait before you take scissors to it? Right. Um, fertilize it. See where it's growing. If it doesn't come back, what you'll do is one of those branches, come the next layer, will start elongating faster. And so take a piece of bamboo and tie it against the trunk. And then just take some green tie tape and slightly bend up that longest, strongest uh, side branch and force it up towards the sky. And it will naturally, pine trees just, they want to do this. It will just start naturally being your new lead or your new top growth. So it's easy to recover from this uh, by May. You'll know if I need to cut it back. And my guess is yes, but I just don't want to tell you. I don't want you to butcher it <laughs> don't yet. Jump just kind of wait. Yeah. Fertil 
<coughs> fertilize first. Uh, bark beetle, take a close look at the bark. If you see sawdust, holes, sap weeping, anything ab abnormal, that's bark beetle. In fact, it's it's getting so bad. I've seen so many cases. I'm starting to write. I'm going to think I'm going to put a press release out next mm -hmm. week going, here's what to look for. Here's some pictures. Here's how to treat it. If you see that sawdust, holes, sap, come see us immediately. This is really, really serious. The plant will die without treatment. Mm -hmm. So come see us. We'll, we'll probably tell you to fertilize and put plant protector. There's a liquid that we make. You pour it right at the trunk. The plant will absorb it and take out the bark beetle. So that's what to do. Take some pictures. If in doubt, yeah. I mean, it's not just an email. This is one probably you want to come talk to us and, and get more, get honed in on this right. before you lose it. Right. Definitely. Yeah. All right. Next question is from Shannon in Prescott Valley. She wanted to put in some blue spruce between her and her neighbor, kind of create a screen. Uh, but she said a couple of people have told her, oh, you can't do blue spruce here. They don't grow well. Yeah. So she's asking, what's your opinion and is there something better? So Shannon, some of your neighbors are smart and some of them aren't. <laughs> You're nice. talking to the wrong ones. I can be nice. <laughs> okay. Yeah. There are some beautiful, yeah. there's beautiful spruce out there. Just walk your neighborhood. You'll see them. You, you, your neighborhood will prove your neighbors wrong. Yeah. So yes, you can have them. There's a planting technique because it is heavy clay out there. Mm -hmm. So I, I would say a, a nice wide hole, planting a very slight mound, ever so slight. And we can show you how to do this. Mm -hmm. When you get ready, Shannon, come, come talk to us. And we'll make sure that you are successful with that. You can have Colorado spruce. You can have Fat Albert spruce. You can have Baccarat spruce. You can have hoop size spruce. Baby blue. You can have spruce. Baby blue. You can have spruce. Yeah, they're beautiful out there. there. What are you talking about? <laughs> Don't get mad at me. I'm not mad. It's just kind of the things you hear. I, I, I created a post that's going to air here shortly uh -oh. on social media. If you follow us on social, it's kind of quirky, fun. I look at our social feed. This is this is Facebook, Instagram, you know, TikTok. We're on all those. I, I put a, a, a post together going, um, my my decades of horticultural experience and four year horticultural degree trumps your Google search. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just <laughs> totally slight of hand, just just for fun. Oh just go on the things you hear. Poor doctors, I don't know how they do it. I don't know the how nurse they do techs, it. you know, those folks are going. Yeah, my phone says I need to do this. Treat me. And they're going, whoa, 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 wait a minute. Let's do a, let's do a few tests first. Okay. Anyway, Thank what you. else we got before Google. we go down a path that we can't That's get out of? That's true. Okay. <laughs> Ruth Ann and Chino is looking for a tree that will stay under 20 feet. She has okay. a small far far small front yard out in Chino. Okay. So what would you recommend? Oh, well, you can help me with this. There's so many. Mm -hmm. So the ones that are in bloom right now are purple leaf plum. If you like purple, the green one that's blooming white right now, that's Bradford pear. Isn't They're both short. I think it's 30 feet. I mean, by the time she finally leaves, <laughs> it's, it'll be some, the next person's responsibility. Well, you don't know how old she is. Crab apples, service berry, uh, probably the most famous local hardy one or, or native one is red bud. Mm -hmm. We've got a whole section of nothing but tiny trees for tiny yards. Come you know see what us. We have the one that I haven't seen before is a um, Japanese lilac tree. Yeah, that's fun. That that's, looks that's like 12 it's feet, be really 10, 12 pretty. feet. Yeah, it's perfect. Real and that would be a from... late spring. Yeah, bloomer? late spring, early summer. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's a good one. Another one is cork, that corkscrew uh, um, locust. What's that called? Oh, Twisty um, Baby. Twisty Baby Locust. You want something funky. If you want a, an art piece out there that's also shade, this day short, mm -hmm. that's a good twisty baby because yeah. it's all the the, the bark, mm -hmm. the, the, the branches are all twisty. It's kind of neat. I think it has a white bloom. Doesn't it do yeah. a white bloom? White or yellow. One of those two. One of those two. But yeah, that would we'll be know shortly. <laughs> right now, no foliage. The locusts kind of come out later. Yeah. We there also is. got another tree in called a um, strawberry. Strawberry tree? Yeah. With that, we're out of time, babe. Okay. So, oh no, we've got a little bit. It's only That's nine why minutes. I'm like, why are you we got a whole ninety me? seconds to go. This is <laughs> what? What'd you say anyway? I was jumping the guns. 
See, you're making me <laughs> doggone wacko. clock should be bigger. Where are my bifocals? <laughs> it's this, they call it a strawberry tree. Yeah, it looks really evergreen. Neat too. Yeah, it's an evergreen. Yeah. It puts on a little uh, fruit. You could it's also use season. big shrubs like red tip, botinia, sure. cotoni aster, mm-hmm. silverberry, eleagnus. Mm-hmm. There's quite a few. That's one you probably want to take in. Come talk to us. Yeah. Or you can research that on our website. So tell, if you want a shortcut, top10trees.com. So the number 10. And we list all of our trees that are here in stock right now. Mm-hmm. We try to put how much water, how much wind, how much sun, how tall. Yeah. Ours right here, not, right. not nationally. Our, how they grow right mm-hmm. here. That's good. And so that would be a great resource to research for you come in. And then you can buy it online or you come in and go, I want this one. Where is it? Perfect. Now we're out of time. Okay. Thanks, Ben. Uh, Ken and Lisa Lane, the Mountain Gardeners. We'll be right back. Yes. You're listening to Ken Lane, aka the Mountain Gardener. Ken can be found throughout the week in Prescott at Waters Garden Center. Listen each week as he answers timely garden questions unique to mountain gardens. If life is a bowl of cherries, why not make them the biggest, sweetest cherries ever? Waters Garden Center is super excited to introduce our new organic fruit and vegetable plant food. This fertilizer has the bonus of added calcium that gives fruit trees and veggies an extra boost to produce healthy, abundant crops. Feed your plants now to help them thrive and grow more fruits than ever in just $27 for a 20-pound bag. Safe, natural, organic fruit and vegetable plant food only at Waters Garden Center. Waters Garden Companion Plants of March are Presca Pansies, Mountain Heath, Rosemary Creeper, Fanciful Forsythia, and Oklahoma Redbud. Oklahoma Redbud grows to just 16 feet tall. This local native is super easy to grow. Vibrant red flowers cloak the branches of early spring. Luscious heart-shaped leaves emerge with a soft pink tinge that matures to a vibrant green. Shop the brightest blooming trees in store or online at watersgardencenter.com in Prescott. You've been listening to The Mountain Gardener with local expert Ken Lane. Join the conversation every week as he answers timely garden questions. Email Ken a question directly from your phone to his desktop through the web at watersgardencenter.com. That's waters with two T's, gardencenter.com. Now welcome back your host, Ken Lane. There are two things I've absolutely finished this last, really three if you think about it, in my own gardens. And so these are, I finished last weekend, and so they're done. In fact, I went right before that rainstorm. I went, oh, this is a perfect opportunity. Kind of came in, and right beforehand, uh, I fertilized everything, which I've been telling you to fertilize for a couple weeks now. It, it's, okay, you either listened or you didn't. It is time to fertilize. I can't emphasize that enough. The plants need it for this spring growth. They're going to flush, especially your evergreens. Those uh, pinyon pines, ponderosas, Arizona cypress, cedars, all of those. If it's got green growth, red tip photinia especially needs it. That's that this big shrub. It, all the new growth comes out red. Really, really, really needs to be fertilized, and and not with just any plant food. So it needs to have a good balanced plant food. A, a we sell one here. I make one. I make my own fertilizers. They're organic, they're all natural ingredients, but, but they're made to, it's a 7-4-4, 7% nitrogen, 4% phosphorus, 4% potash, with some iron and sulfur and some other mineral trace elements. So nitrogen forms green foliage. If you want new candle growth, new, new needles on those evergreens, new leaves on that maple tree or aspens, new new green foliage, grass, oh my gosh, that's 7 4 4 all-purpose plant food I make is the best lawn food you've ever seen. It's got bird guano in there that just greens it up within two weeks. Solid green. You better make make sure the mower is ready to go. The middle number is phosphorus. So it has 4% phosphorus. Fo- that middle number forms fruits and roots. If you want bigger tomatoes, if you want more uh, apples, bigger grapes, anything that forms a fruit. Or if it's a brand new plant and you just want more roots underneath that thing, that the plant is either going to put roots on or put on fruit. That's what that middle number is for. Phosphorus, that last number, remember, 744, phosphorus, 4% phosphorus. That is uh, for disease resistance. 
It's for uh, uh, leaf thickness, for stem branching sturdiness, uh, for, for fighting off bugs, fighting off a leaf spot, leaf curl, leaf disease, powdery mildew. It makes the plant sturdy and strong. Uh, for you, it'd be like calcium. It makes my bones strong. This, that's what phosphorus does to a plant. So you got nitrogen, phosphorus, potash, green growth, fruit growth, hardiness, sturdiness. Uh, and then you get into minor trace elements. That's iron and sulfur and magnesium. And it, almost the garden information you're, you're getting off the internet focuses more on the minor trace elements. It's, it's really, you don't have to focus on that if you get a really good balanced food, you can skip all the other iron and stuff. The plant probably doesn't need it. And so I've fertilized everything in the yard from lawns to trees to shrubs to roses. Everything got the same thing, 744 all-purpose plant food. In addition, I put down a weed and grass stopper. The weeds are going to go nuts. I mean, the, 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 the soil, as it warms up, you're seeing everything act actively grow. Your peonies are up. They got to be a good eight inches tall right now. So they're actively growing. They'll be in bloom here in two, three weeks. And so, so will your dandelions. So will the whorehound and all these other nasty <laughs> mountain weeds that are, that are just, they're more aggressive, I think, sometimes. I think it's partly the wind. It just, the wind blows those seeds. And so you get wind coming up. You, you put all this fancy... Uh, weed fabric down, you, you put a lot of rock, rock down, and then weeds still come up. Put down weed and grass stopper. It's a preventer. It, you spread it like fertilizer, uh, but then, then water activates it, and then it just keeps the seed from ever germinating. So if you've got rock lawn, you put weed and grass stopper on there, and weeds just blow in. You get tumbleweeds everywhere. It's going to keep that seed from ever getting started in that and all the silt and dust build up just, just below the mat. It, you, trust me, it really cuts down on the work. You're gonna, it gets rid of 95, 96, 98% of all weeds. But you got to put it down before they show up. I don't like weeding. And so I've, I've just put it down everywhere. Lastly, so I said three things, food, weed and grass preventer. And I have, I have treated all of my pine evergreen trees all of my evergreen trees with plant protector. It's a liquid. I had my two watering cans out. You just measure the trunk of the tree where it's comfortable, however many inches around that is. You dump that many ounces of plant protector into your watering can or bucket or whatever you're using. Top it off with water. And then you pour that solution right around the trunk, right where the trunk meets the soil, right where the, we call it where the crown is. So where the trunk meets that soil, you pour this plant protector solution right around that. The plant will absorb it and it takes out pinion pine scale, which is bad right now. It gets rid of, of bark beetle or ips beetle on ponderosas, which are really bad right now. It gets rid of aphids on your spruce trees and pines which are really bad right now. I mean, it just really cuts down on the, on the work of getting rid of bugs. And one application is good for the entire year. If you're fertilizing your evergreens and putting plant protector on, you are gonna have beautiful, lush, fast growing, thick evergreens in your yard. Got more in store for you, but we've got Lisa Waters Lane coming back into the studio right after this. The Mountain Gardener, your source for timely garden advice right for higher elevations. Guaranteed to make a difference in your yard this season. The colors of spring are bursting at Water's 60th Spring Open House. COVID is over with a record number of Water's farmers showing off their newest, brightest flowers all weekend. Friday, we show off this year's showiest plant introductions. Saturday and Sunday is impromptu garden classes, plant garden giveaways, and drawings. Join the garden fun at Water's Garden Center's 60th Spring Open House, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, March 11th through 13th. 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott. Waters Garden Companion Plants for March are Oklahoma Redbud, Mountain Heath, Prescott Pansies, Fanciful Forsythia, and Rosemary Creeper. Rosemary Creeper is a local favorite for rock gardens, ground cover, or spilling over retaining walls. But not all local rosemary is created equal. This one lives where others die. 
Knowing you can also use it in the kitchen is sheer bliss. Shop the freshest organic herbs in store or online at watersgardencenter.com in Prescott. You're listening to The Mountain Gardener with local expert, Ken Lane. Mountain gardening is very rewarding with a few Ken's tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts sure to turn your thumbs even greener. Now welcome back to The Mountain Gardener. How many years we've been doing this? Innumerable. A lot. <laughs> just <feels> innumerable. <laughs> yeah, just, uh, I'm old enough, I don't remember, I don't know. Anyway... She comes and just shares her garden thoughts, what she's seen in the gardens. You do lots of hiking, biking, walking around, just kind of taking the dogs out, looking at landscapes. And, well, we share some of that. Plus, you're out there talking to gardeners Mm -hmm. like all of us. It's valuable to get another set of eyes out in the gardens. Plus, I don't have to fill the entire hour program with just me. And I like hanging out (laughs) with you in little studios. It's perfect. Welcome back to the studio. Very nice to be here, as usual. How nice is it? <laughs> Never mind. I don't want to go there. Okay, so what do you <laughs> what do you got for us? You're already doing that, dude. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> well, the first thing I thought I would show everybody. So this is candy tuft. Um, so we have a lot of this in, but it is such a great little perennial for our area. Yeah. It is a spring bloomer, so it's one of those first things to really show off their colors in the spring. Um, comes back every year, and I've got a cough. Oh, I, hey, I'll cover for you while the allergies go crazy. So, this is a this is this is a really specialized plant. It really only does well here at this elevation right here. It's a native, yeah. evergreen. Mm-hmm. Animals don't eat it, so it gets up. I don't know, maybe a foot tall or yeah, so, kind of mounding. But it blooms for a crazy long time. It has a nasty smelling flower. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. It's the reason That's the animals, why animals don't like it. So. <laughs> but we it's so specialized. We had to grow. We have maybe a hundred of them we've mm-hmm. specially grown. You're only gonna have them, you're only gonna find them here. They're not yeah. out. You're not gonna find them at home, whatever box thing. I won't say what I really Thank think you. of them. So, but anyway, this is a, a great little perennial for mm-hmm. every garden should have at least one because it does well in containers, right? Raised beds, right out in the yard. Receipts. Yeah. It's just a great little plant to have in your uh, your house, whether it's in pots or in beds. It definitely needs some because I like how it just kind of announces spring. And the other thing about white out in the landscape, it shows up so nicely. You know, everybody thinks about oh the reds and the pinks, but I tell you, you put white out there and it really pops. You know, white with our Arizona with our earth tones against the reds and the mochas mm-hmm. and the even against the the granite kind of colors it really pops we generally have darker colors and it really stands out all, all by itself right. but it also brings out all the other colors yes it does yeah. so definitely time to come pick up the candy tuft what's the other is that iberus, iberus. is that the latin name for that uh-huh. iberus but just for the gardeners tough. oh candy <laughs> tuft yeah candy it's easier mm-hmm. So another couple of things that um, are coming in next week that we haven't had before that are really going to be cool. So one is called Flip Side. It's a Vitex or Chased Tree. Yeah. Um, this one's going to be right. dark purple. Great thing about it, it's a small tree. I think somebody asked a question earlier yeah. about small trees. So this one gets between six and eight feet. So oh, that's it's just really, a that's really... a shrub. What are you talking about? That's not a tree. <laughs> But it's called the flip side. I think it's flip side because the one side of the leaves, I think, is a darker color. Yeah. So it's kind of got that two-tone textured color to it. So yeah. interesting out Neat. in the yard. It's going to be dark purple. The standard chaste gets, what is that, like 15. 12, 15 feet? Mm-hmm. And, and animals don't eat that again. Again, right. it's got that two-tone mm-hmm. leaf. But uh, to have a dwarf, yeah. half size, right. that's, does it have and the same summer flower? Bloomers. Yes, same flower. Summer bloomers, mm-hmm. perfect. Mm-hmm. That was and the other one is galactic pink. So I think this is the first time we've carried a pink vitex. Wow. Uh, gets about the same height and all that. But Six feet or 12 six feet? Six to eight. Gotcha. Yeah. Dwarf again. Mm-hmm. Pink chase tree. I never would have thought of a thing. Tell me when one starts to glow in the dark and I'll really be impressed. <laughs> well, <laughs> you may have to wait a year or two on that one. But I just wanted to let people know as you're coming in because it's kind of a unique 
uh, new introductions. So definitely something you want to do. We get very many. For. I know that's so new. We grab everything we can. I think we're getting about twenty of each. Okay, good, perfect. So, that's yes, enough. We sort of have enough. To yeah, get it'll run started. out quick. Is what'll happen. Yeah. So good. But, Cool ones that are coming in. But the other thing I wanted to talk about is the selection of cactus that we got in. Yay! I'm excited too. Because we have been searching long and hard and far and wide looking for a good source for cactus. And you think Arizona, oh my gosh, there's got to be cactus everywhere. Mount Hardy is the hard part. <laughs> they don't grow up at the so south. So that's the tricky part is to find yeah. ones that will grow well up here that we know will grow well in, in some little microclimates. So we did find a very nice Hold on, you're talking not in the microphone. Oh, sorry, you're grabbing this that big heavy. old pokey thing. Here, I'll help you. I'm a big, strong man. I'll help Ooh, you. Out. Thank How can you. I help you, honey? <laughs> that's that's just wrong in so kind many ways. <laughs> little sexist, yeah. but we'll let it go. Holding up to the camera, you got so it. So this is the uh, peri ice agave. So a nice winter, it does wonderful in our yeah. cold, cold winters. Uh, so this is just one of the agaves that we got in. I think we got maybe three or. four four different varieties of ga of gaves in. Uh, Peria is probably being one of my favorites. It grows um, wild up on the Bradshaws. Mm -hmm. You'll see clusters of them. Right. This also it's called the century plant. Mm -hmm. So it, every century it, it shoots up this huge flower, it gets up like 10, 12 feet tall. Right. Um, supposedly once every hundred <laughs> years, that's the name century plant. Well, we got right. the Utah Gensis, mm -hmm. the one that grows up on the Canyon. Uh, Grand Canyon area. We've right. got several hardy, tough, mm -hmm. tough. Take any cold, right. any weather, it's going to produce. Yeah, so really cool. I was really happy to get those in. We have them in a few different sizes, yeah. size containers. We also got some great cactus in that we have not been able to find in a can while. I put this down? No, I heavy. just want to see if you can hold it. It's the entire time. <laughs> if, if you're watching the vlog, the the look at the needles on that baby. Let's see yeah. if you get that. The needles on each pad. In fact, I saw a uh, last Christmas, someone had a bigger one of these and they'd taken uh, a styrofoam oh, Christmas balls, balls and they decorated their agave <laughs> and poked the balls on top of the uh, pads. And it was yeah. pretty. It was That's cute, a cool idea. Cute, cute Southwestern idea. You got to love Arizona. There you go. So we also found some really cool cactus that we haven't really been able to bring in in a while. The hedgehog or the yeah. claret's cup. Yeah. Uh, that's another one that's just natively, you'll find it around here. But we just haven't been able to find a good source for growing, people yeah. growing it consistently. So we have some beautiful hedgehogs. They're actually blooming. Yeah, it was they pretty. They look really pretty. Yeah. So definitely check out the hedgehogs. We got prickly pear, which you're like, eh, prickly pear. But these are beautiful specimens. New, yeah, new varieties. <laughs> and some of them, what's the big, great big paddle? That one? is a dinner plate prickly pear. Wow. The pads are the size of dinner plate. It's a zone eight. Uh -huh. So it's easily going to grow up to Prescott Valley, you know, Dewey Humboldt. The Verde, mm -hmm. uh, down towards Skull Valley, Williamson Valley. Uh, here, I think you could grow it in Prescott Direct nice if you had a nice spot. hot spot. Really probably yummy. Groom Creek and the higher mm -hmm. elevations, you know, Williams, Seligman. Right. Nah, probably probably not good up there. It might freeze unless you protect it. Mm -hmm. be like a barrel cactus. Right. You can grow barrel, you can grow this. It's the mm -hmm. same. They're companions. Okay. So, but it's 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 a prickly pear. It's beautiful. On steroids. It so it's is. really it's neat. really huge paddle. Yeah. So we got some of those in. Um, Choya, yeah. otherwise known as, I always thought this was a stupid name, but teddy bear cactus. Yeah. <laughs> Cause they, they look, look, they yeah, look fuzzy, fuzzy but yeah. no, you don't want to be giving them a big hug. Yeah. Don't hug it. Don't <laughs> hug a Choya, but they're, they're funky. Interesting. Yes. Yes. If you're from the Southwest, you kind of go, ah, it's a Choya. If you're from anywhere else in the country going, that mm -hmm. is pretty cool. That's pretty neat. The Midwest, those right. folks, mm -hmm. and they're tough. They will take, I've seen Choya go down to sub zero. And they still come back and look oh, yeah. fantastic. Mm -hmm. So definitely got some big, some nice size yeah. choyas in. Uh, we also got uh, one of my favorites. It's called a Moroccan Mound. Oh. Um, and it's a zone eight as well. But we have grown it in a container for three, four years now. Well, maybe longer. I don't know. So long. Yeah. It's, it's full and beautiful. Oh, it's, it's gorgeous. And yeah. we, we just give it a little bit of protection in the wintertime. But I pulled it out a week ago or so out into the main yard where it normally lives. Um, but it's beautiful and doesn't require any, any care. Work. Yeah. <laughs> I pretty much ignore that plant. Every once in a while, I'll throw water on it. I'm like, eh, I might need some water. So yeah. I throw water on it. I tell you what, if you, I, I fertilized our Moroccan mound. This would work for any of those cacti. Give it some of our flower power fertilizer, ah. that liquid fertilizer, mm -hmm. put it on there. 
they went into full yellow That's bloom. True. It was it really did. pretty. So yeah, we are out of time. We lots of cacti. Okay. You only touched on them, but outdoor varieties. Mm -hmm. And growing your yard, if you're looking to add some, make more Southwest. So Ken and Lisa Lane, the Mountain Gardeners, be right back. Yes. Look for more tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts through Ken's website. Podcast the show, read his weekly garden column, or follow him on Facebook and Instagram at watersgardencenter.com. That's waters with two T's, gardencenter.com. Waters Garden Companion Plants for March are Oklahoma Redbud, Mountain Heaths, Rosemary Creeper, Prescott Pansies, and Fanciful Forsythia. Fanciful Forsythia is a gorgeous spring shrub that explodes with masses of solar yellow flowers, followed by shiny green leaves. Every home should have one for sheer beauty, fall color, and gentle natural care. Shop the brightest spring bloomers in store or online at watersgardencenter.com in Prescott. Oh no, my pine trees look terrible. Never fear, Plant Protector is here. Plant Protector? From Waters Garden Center? My super strength protector destroys pine scale, bark beetle, and aphids. Just water into the soil and your trees are protected from the inside out for the year. Thank you, Plant Protector. You can always find Plant Protector at Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott. Welcome to the Mountain Gardener with Ken Lane. Gardening in the mountains is different. Listen to Ken's tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts guaranteed to make your gardens more beautiful than ever this year. Now for better advice that works locally, welcome your host, Ken Lane. So we have had a rush of gardeners, homeowners, coming in. This has got to be new home builds or something going on. So an unusual number of people are coming in for privacy screens. Their neighbors coming up. I've, I've helped a few that are planning ahead. That is, they've got an open lot out there and, and it's been open, but they know a developer just bought it and how's they're going to go up. So they're starting to plant in anticipation of that new development. You know, six new homes in your backyard. They're all going to be your closest friends. Oh, you just want to plan ahead on that one. And so that's the way to do it. Which plants can you put there now to obliterate that view so I don't have to look at all the construction, all the dust, all the noise, and the neighbors that'll be there barbecuing in my backyard later. And so, but a lot of you are, are in these track homes, these great big, you know, granvilles. They're just packed on top of each other. And so there you just want to, you just, they've got some fences in the backyard, but still you can kind of see over or you want to, you just want to soften up all that block. So we're seeing a lot of privacy folks to soften that up. And so I thought I'd cover which trees or shrubs are best. Which ones are the strongest, the hardiest, the fastest growing uh, that you might want to consider in your backyard if you've got that issue. So you got a new hot tub. You want to screen off the neighbors looking in on you or, the, or their lights always come on. You like to go out in the hot tub at nine o'clock at night and they're always in their bedroom. You know, lights are on. The windows may or may not be open, and they're watching you. So what do you use to screen that? Uh, this would also apply for you folks out in the valley areas where you just want to cut the wind. Let's say you've got bigger properties, uh, but, but you've got you know Coyote Springs, Piquito Valley, Chino Valley, Paulden. These folks, you've got big properties, but the wind can really cut down. The same trees are used there for privacy or for, for windbreaks. Uh, well, let's say at night that the traffic is coming right into your front living room. You could use those to block that headlights from those cars. Same thing, wind production, all those. So here you go. The fastest growing, bar none, is Deodor Cedar. It's too fast, too big for some of you. You smaller lots, probably not good. Bigger yards, great. So Deodor Cedar is, it grows Oh, two, three feet a year. It's very, very fast. And it gets tall, 80 feet. I mean, 60 easy to, or higher. Basically, once you get above 40, 50 feet, it's just keep go, it's going to the moon. But it, but here's the thing. Deodor Cedar gets 25 feet wide. Some of your yards are only 50 feet long. This tree is going to be as big as the backyard. So you can see why it can get too large for some of you, but it grows fast great out there. You don't want to put it as a, 
as a street tree because the branches will keep on growing out into the street or into your driveway or obliterate the front view of your house. So you want to put them off to the sides or out to the back. That's where you, it's really good at using to accent a view. Let's say you're looking at Granite Mountain or Thumb Butte or, or the, the Bradshaws. And you want to draw the eye on that back deck or patio. You just pull one to the right, one to the left. And then all of a sudden, you're going to be looking in between these two big, large evergreens. And it's going to be like a panoramic picture frame you just created. That's how you use Deodor Cedar. So we've got some beautiful specimens here. They're gorgeous, but they're too much for us. I try to I talk more people out of them than I, than I sell them. Some that I use myself... So I wanted, I've got a small front yard, so we're a half acre lot, uh, maybe a little bit more, but the front yard is, is smaller. It's a patio. And I wanted to block the street off just to soften up so I can read my paper on the front sofa, out in the yard, watching the hummingbirds in my PJs and not have to worry about, not have to talk to every neighbor going by. I like talking to neighbors, but sometimes you just want privacy. And so I used ju uh, 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 junipers in the front yard because they're so tough. They don't get bugs. They're low water use. They're just, they're just methodical. They keep growing. I used Spartan junipers because they're so green. They get up to about uh, 10 feet tall or so, four, five, six feet wide. There's a nice green, tall. they've got a central leader. And so then they've got branches kind of, but they're just pint sized. And so I stacked them in. I've got I don't know, six or seven of them, just zigzagging them through the front yard. And just it's just a solid wall of green. Now, junipers get a bad rap sometimes. Now, I know some of you are kind of going, I'm changing the channel. He used, he used the word juniper. I'm out of here. So the native junipers are a problem. They do have a lot of pollen. They cause allergies. The small junipers we sell here at the garden center do not. So it's the males, the male junipers cause all this grief. They're the ones that throw off the pollen. They're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna infuse every single gal on the mountainside. One, one male plant wants to have so much dust, so much pollen. He's gonna pollinate every other female in, in, in the valley. And so the females don't have that kind of problem. It's the males. And so if we know that and we're breeding plants, we're raising plants, they're kind of like puppy dogs. We raise them to be like each other. So we've got female clones of these plants. And so they don't form. They don't have all the dust issues, all the pollen issues. So they don't cause the allergies. Plus they're small. Plus if you have an allergy, I have, I've got allergy. You might hear it in my voice a little bit, a little scratchy. I, I usually take wild honey and, and kind of, I do all these things and I still can feel it because I work outdoors for a living. This year, it's really bad. Um, if you've got that kind of allergy, you're surrounded. You're living in pine forest, in, in juniper and pine forest. They're everywhere. One more little juniper in your yard to screen off the neighbor is not going to hurt. But I, okay, enough of my so soapbox. Just letting you know, it's okay, because they're so tough. But Italian cypress is a counter to that. Cypress don't have those issues. And that's the cow, that's the one that grows... 50 feet tall and only three feet wide. It's like a pencil growing up out of the out of the ground. You can use those easily to block off, especially if you have a narrow yard. This is a great property line down the, between two homes. That's one you use, Italian cypress. It's great. And so it works really, really well. Strong grower, drought hardy, takes the wind. It's a good plant for here. Another one that that a lot of folks like that they have, maybe they're new to the area and they're going, oh, I really like that one. Uh, it looks like a Christmas tree is, is spruce. We have Spruce Mountain right here next to Prescott. You can almost, you can take your side by side right up there. Uh, so there's, there's spruce grows really, really well here. Colorado spruce, all of the spruce trees do really well here. Uh, they're a little slower growing. So a Colorado, maybe you'll get foot and a half, two feet of growth a year but it puts it over the entire plant, the top and the side. So it has this perfect shaped Christmas, you know, from, from small to tall, you know, from, from narrow to wide. Uh, it just grows this perfect shape without any, no pruning, no need for you to do anything. It just has this great shape to it. So because it's so narrow at the top, it could take a couple of years to get it filled out enough to be a privacy screen, but 
it does actually work well doing that. Usually when I'm helping someone design, I'll, I'll put a, if they really like Colorado spruce or, or a spruce, Baccarat, Hoopsai, I probably have six different varieties and it's the color changes. They go from green to blue to the silver color. It's really pretty. There I'll try to, I'll mix in some, let's say aspens in between or, or a maple tree. You can make this garden-esque kind of, of row that blocks out that view or those neighbors, that RV or that house or that deck or whatever you're trying to screen. There's a way to blend it and mix it and you can put a few spruce in there. Uh, another one that's kind of like that, that doesn't, that is really thick, 20 feet tall, 12 feet wide, all the way from the ground, all the way up is Arizona cypress. Uh, so Arizona, it grows wild. It's a native here. That's the name Arizona, Cypress. It's grown all over the world, but we're famous for it. It came from right here, right? I mean, right here, Prescott, Arizona, this central highlands of Yavapai County. It came from right here. So Arizona Cypress adapts really well, fast growing, thick. It sort of looks like a juniper, but it has a, it has a pine cone instead of a berry on it. It's quite pretty. So it's a good, good choice for you, especially out in the valley areas where you want to cut the wind. A 20-foot block that's 12 feet wide It's perfect for that. So you want to, your garden's getting wind whipped, put one on the southwest side. It'll take that wind right out, and your gardens will thrive at that point. We have an entire section of nothing but privacy screens. I thought I'd just touch on a few of the most popular or some ideas that can maybe help you. But we're here to help hone that in. Take a picture. Take a quick measurement and we can help guide that through and block that view off. Whatever you want to do with that for privacy in your yard. Be right back. You're listening to local garden expert Ken Lane, the owner of Waters Garden Center. He can be found throughout the week at Waters Garden Center, located in Prescott at 1815 Iron Springs Road. Thanks for tuning in to the Mountain Gardener. Waters Garden Companion Plants of March are Oklahoma Redbud, Mountain Heat, Rosemary Creeper, Fanciful Forsythia, and Prescott Pansy. Prescott Pansy's giant three-inch flowers thrive in extreme March gardens. Large velvety blooms dazzle with radiant colors of blue, violet, yellow, and variations of stripes that look like smiling faces and love being planted in March. Shop the brightest spring flowers in-store or online at watersgardencenter.com. In Prescott, gardening and you don't know where to start? Waters In-Home Garden Service comes to you and identifies what you have and how to make it better. Design advice, water strategies, vegetable and flower gardens, soil and food needs, and problem solving. Always problem solving. You'll instantly be a better gardener. All for just $200 of expert time with a coupon to fill your garden dreams without ever leaving home. In-Home Garden Consultations from Waters Garden Center. We can be at your home this week. You've tuned in to The Mountain Gardener with local garden expert Ken Lane. Join him each week as he answers timely garden questions that are sure to make a difference in your gardens. Now welcome your host, Ken Lane. So I want to give a big shout out to the Prescott Noon Lions Club. I was out there on, I think here, Wednesday and talk they meet up at goods for the gardens up by the prescott mall area but a great group of of lions there lions are doing such good work if you if you want to get a feel for the heart and soul of a community the people that are trying to make our place a better a be, just better our world better we want the insider scoop you know they say oh they're they're insiders no, they just joined a service club. That's a way to get to know folks. It's an easy way to connect with your community, especially if you're new to the area. And Lions are just a good group of folks. I've, I've spoken to several Lions clubs. Love what you're doing. But Prescott Noon Lions, they meet at noon, of course, on Wednesdays, out at Goods for the Gardens. Uh, I, I'll bet if you just showed up, they'd let you come on in and visit or tour or... or uh, just kind of sit in and see what it's all about. But great group. Loved sharing some garden tips with you. I appreciate you guys, what you're doing, what, what you did. I'm a Rotarian at heart because I'm a Rotarian. But if I couldn't be a Rotarian, I think I'd be a lion. So anyway, th thanks for having me out there. The garden class. Now we've shifted. We are no longer having Saturday garden classes. Our facility, I don't have enough parking spaces. The garden center is plenty big enough. You know, it's over two acres. But the parking, I only have about 70 spaces. And so I, don't, I don't have room for 
for 50 students plus you know 20 shoppers there so we're having to shift a little bit i've got some capacity on fridays and so we move from saturday at 9 30 to friday at 3. i know some of you that going well i can't make it then what are you doing to me you're killing me here well adjust <laughs> sorry some people can some can't i've noticed there's a little different mix which is kind of fun but Fridays at three, to, uh, this, this last Friday, it was how to prepare soils. Uh, next week, though, next Friday, how to grow peonies. Let me see, let me pull that site up real quick. Watersgardencenter.com. You go to classes, your big classes button right there. But next week, April 1st, just kidding. Is that April Fools? April 1, I think is April Fools. Anyway, it is going to be at three growing better peonies. So it is time to put those in. Great selection right now. We've got the following Friday, April 8th, lilacs and better fragrance in the gardens. And then my first urban vegetable garden, that's April 15th, and new flower introductions, April 22nd. So that's the spring series of classes. Take a look at those. They are free. They're meant to help you be a better gardener. We want to help you make, make less mistakes. You learn gardening by making mistakes. Some of you beat yourself up because you know, your, your little tiny petunia died on you. Stop doing that to yourself. It's just for $2.99, you can get a new one. It's just not, it's, you're not planting puppy dogs, people. You're planting plants. If you kill one, it's okay, but that's how you learn. Oh, oops, got in the wrong spot. I might need to move it or change it, or we call this gardening, so you can move it. So even I have some losses. The secret is to make sure you're making mistakes while going in the right direction. So that's why we're so social. Going, yeah, I tried a lilac over there. It was too shady. It started to lean. I put it out in full sun. It did better. Those kinds of tips were trying to help you. Uh, peonies. I can tell you we've got a lot of peonies. I have killed two of them. Some, one of them was an expensive, exotic, rare one. Oh, it really hurts. But I had it in soil. It didn't drain. So I had, the soil was too hard. Raised Now I'm growing it in a pot, that same variety. I did it again. Put it in a container. It's been fabulous for five years. It's gorgeous. But, but containers drain better than that heavy clay soil where I live. So those are those insider tips that gardeners like to share with each other that can make you better. They're every Friday, 3 o'clock. Come join us. Uh, if you just get bored and you want something to do, you're with the girlfriends are gathering up going, what do you want to do today? Come to the garden center. It's fun just to hang out, watch hummingbirds, watch butterflies. We love hosting. Ken and Lisa Lane, the mountain gardeners. We love talking to fans of the show. If you want a more fruitful garden, increase success in your landscape that just feels better, then tune in every week to the mountain gardener. Years of tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts are guaranteed to make your gardens nicer than ever. Listen to this podcast or read Ken's weekly garden column by visiting watersgardencenter.com. That's waters with two T's, gardencenter.com. Thanks for tuning in.